In this video, we shall discuss about ivermectin. With the recent research in the COVID-19, it is essential for many of us to learn about ivermectin, its uses, indications and other things. So let's start with the history. In 1975, Professor Satoshi Omura at Kitsado Institute in Japan isolated an unusual streptomyces bacteria from the soil near a golf grouse along the southeast coast of Honshu, Japan. And along with him, William Campbell isolated a compound from this bacteria and it was named Streptomyces avermetilis as and it had it had the ability to clear mice of worms originally this drug was introduced as a veterinary drug later it was used to treat human worm infestations so campbell isolated the active compounds from this bacterial culture and he called it avermectins and from which the bacteria derived its name Streptomyces avermetilis for the compound's ability to clear of clear mice of worms. So ivermectin is a semi-synthetic derivative of family of macrocyclic lactones called avermectins. The usual dosage in the human beings is 150 to 200 microgram per kg, either in a single or multiple dose based on indication. The absorption. Absorption is actually somewhat controversial because some studies have shown that it is well absorbed in fasting state, while others showed it may be absorbed well with high fat meal. After absorption, the protein binding is around 93% primarily to albumin and the metabolism is by hepatic via CYP3A4, it is a major one, and CYP2E6 and CYP2E1 are minor metabolism pathways. The half-life elimination is around 18 hours and time to peak in the serum is around 4 hours. Excretion is through feces majorly and through urine less than 1%. The mechanism of action in parasites is through influx of chloride ion channel after binding to a sensitive ion channel. So following which there will be hyperpolarization of the cell which leads to muscle paralysis. And through this mechanism the ivermectin paralyzes the parasite and also it also paralyzes the respiratory muscles which will lead to death of the parasites. So the indication, common indications are ivermectin is active against most nematode parasites. It can also be used in treatment of orthropod ectoparasite infestations such as scabies. The usual principal indications are onchocerciasis and strongyloidiosis and it can also be used in ascariasis. So the principal indications are onchocerciasis, strongyloidiasis, and there are many off-label uses such as ascariasis, demodicosis, nathostomiasis, hookworm-related cutaneous lava migraines, lice, bucararia, bancrofti, mansonella, etc. The adverse effects after taking ivermectin are usually mild, but these have been mentioned in the literature. More than 10% of the patient, we, are, we can see around dermatological features such as pruritus or rashes. There is a reaction called Mazzotti reaction. It is usually rare, but it is seen in patients who have heavy manifestation of the worms. And it is a parasite, it is a reaction of the body against the clearance of the worms. And there could also be hematologic or oncologic manifestations such as lymphadenitis and there could be arthralgia, fever and in 1-10% to of the patient it could cause cardiovascular like tachycardia, peripheral edema, orthostatic hypertension 
through CNS, the CNS side effects could be dizziness and GI side effects could be diarrhea, nausea. And hematologic could be eosinophilia, decreased WBC counts, increased hemoglobin. And the liver enzymes could be elevated. Numerous studies report low rates of adverse reactions with the majority mild, transient and largely attributed to the body's inflammatory response to the death of the parasites and include itching, rash, swollen lymph nodes, joint pains, fever and headache. And this reaction is rare. Coming to the drug interactions. Normally it is it interacts with the vitamin K, so it enhances the anticoagulant effects of vitamin K antagonists. So the like warfarin. So the the category given to the risk is C, and so we we should just adjust the dose of the warfarin. And the other uh, interactions could be BCG intravesical, which is usually you know uh, given in treatment of in like in in managing cases of transitional cell carcinoma of bladder and the category given is to avoid combination the bcg vaccination can be monitored the dose can be the it can be monitored and cholera vaccine should be avoided thank you very much